All right, guys, so I'm going to keep going. And last time we stopped here. So today we're going to talk about uh, blood pressure and uh, atmospheric pressure, right? So we stopped here. So here there is nothing new. You already know that the pressure because of the atmosphere. So we live in the ocean of atmosphere. And it works exactly kind of of um, let's say the water as you go deeper in into the atmosphere when you go from space toward the earth of course the weight of the air molecule is going to increase so the pressure is going to increase so um, we have a huge pressure at uh, at the surface on ground level but we don't really feel that pressure because we have also the same pressure inside our lungs. Now, if there is, you all know that if there is an unbalance in our lung, so it means if there is too much pressure on it, the, the, the lung can, can collapse, right? It's a medical condition, so it can happen. So anyway, here, what do we have here? So the, 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 um, so, so far we have learned, remember when you have blood, or let's say you have, it could be blood, right? Or it could be water. The pressure depends on the, 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 the depth here, right? So it means if you have P1 here and then P2 there, and that will be, let's say, a colon of water, of course, uh, P2 has to be greater than P1, and the difference between those two pressure here will be, it depends on the density, so if you have, for example, blood instead of water, it's going to have more pressure, because blood has more density times G depends on gravity, so if the, the planet pull on that colon harder, of course the pressure is going to be increased, and of course, it depends on, on the height here, between here and there. So for the atmosphere, as I told you, it works the same. So this, let's say this is the surface of the Earth. Maybe it's going to be space. So we, we cannot exactly know where you go from the atmosphere to space. But little by little, the density is going to decrease. So the equation for the atmospheric pressure is not as easy as this one because you have um, the density that's going to change, right? So higher up, the density is small. And, and as you go toward the Earth, you know all those air molecules are going to be compressed and the density is going to increase. But nevertheless, when you do the computation, um, and if you take one meter per one meter per one meter per one meter, so that will be one meter square, the pressure is 10 to the fifth or 10 to the five newton per meter square or 15 pounds per square inches. So you have this uh, very interesting um, experiment. You, you can uh, uh, take a huge can, but it's more impressive if you take a really, really huge can and you you pump the air out and it's going to be crushed. It's not being crushed because you are sucking the air out. It's being crushed because of the atmospheric pressure. Because for each square inches, you have 15 pounds. So the, the air pressure here is going to crush the can. Okay, it's a famous experiment that you can do. You remember the pressure is always perpendicular to the surface, so that will be the force per square inches, always perpendicular, and it, it's huge, right? And then there is another way to do it. It's a very easy experiment that you can do, and I'm, I'm going to show you that. So there is a demonstration, and I, I, I think it has been removed from uh, YouTube for... for I guess, I'm not sure why, but uh, I have saved it here. It's with uh, Walter Lewin. He's a very famous physics professor, used to be at MIT. One of the best, the best uh, physics professor, and with amazing demo. 
and and she has a channel called the physics girl i think so they did that experiment together so i'm going to show you show it to you I'm here today with extremely special guest, MIT Professor Walter Lewin. Yes, the rocket mic! Welcome to my channel, Walter. I'm glad to be To me, it looks more like a lecture than anything else. <laughs> well, it is. We're here at MIT today because Walter is going to show us how to crush this can using just his mind. Do you mind if I use some physics too? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Alright, this is a very strong can. It's metal. And I'm going to put some water in that can. I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to turn on this heater. And notice, this is open, and I want to wait until the water begins to boil. Well, I'll help where I can. <laughs> Get it? Uh, I think it's boiling now. Let me take a peek inside. Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is boiling. Okay, now watch what I'm doing. I'm taking it off the heater, and I'm going to close it off. And it's important that the lid is very tight, so I use a wrench. Now, Diana, just be patient and look at it. You hear the cracking? We can accelerate the cooling a little bit by pouring cold water over it. I hope nothing dangerous happens. <laughs> look at it, it's really shrinking. Look at it, look at it! You sure, Diana, we want to put cold water I'm on sure. it? I'm sure, I think you should try it. You don't mind if I close my eyes? I might close my eyes. There we go. Doesn't look like a can anymore to me. <laughs> Completely imploded. Okay, so for my can, I can't close the top off like Walter did. So I'm gonna take my can and I'm gonna turn it upside down into this bowl of water. Ready? Oh! Did you see that? It collapsed on the spot! Let's take a look. How did we crush this can? And how did we crush this strong can without using a hammer? Let's carefully go over what we did. So we started out with liquid water, which is really dense. That means that the H2O, the water molecules, are right next to each other. When we create steam, those H2O molecules move around much more, and they spread out. That's what happens when we turn water into a gas. It expands. So it drives out the air that was in the can. We have a can which has no air inside anymore, only a little bit of water, and for the rest, steam. It is at that point that I put the lid on, and now we let it cool. And then we accelerate the cooling by pouring cold water. So Walter, what happens when all of those hot spread out water molecules cool down? Most of them will condense back to water. So now all the air is gone. That means as the water condenses back down, we create a really low pressure inside the can. And there's no air left to fill it. Is there another way that we can create low pressure inside the can? Uh, yes, I have here a regular water bottle, which is empty. It's air inside. I'm going to take the air out, some of the air, mm -hmm. by breathing it in. So you created a low pressure inside the bottle, which caused it to implode. But the low pressure is not enough. We actually need high pressure outside as well in order to cause that can to crush. That high pressure is all around us. We call that the atmospheric pressure. And it's the result, the weight of the air that is pushing down on us. So all that atmospheric pressure is actually pushing on the bottle, and that's why it crushed the can. In fact, it's so much pressure, it's like four people standing on one side of the can, and four people standing on the other side of the can. That's eight people standing on this can. No wonder it ends up like this. So, Walter, why doesn't that pressure crush your lungs? That's a very big question. There is a huge pressure on my chest. However, in my lungs is exactly the identical pressure of one atmosphere. So we have the same pressure on both sides and nothing happens. However, I want you to appreciate that if we only talk about your chest alone for, for now, the atmospheric pressure pushes on you with a weight of about 1,000 kilograms, 2,200 pounds. Now you mentioned eight people there, right, when we first began. In that case, that means it's equivalent to 15 people standing on your chest and you don't even notice it. Wow, that is incredible. It is incredible. But physics is incredible. Okay, so that just for the demonstration. You, you could do the same. I mean, if you go on YouTube, you could see those huge containers and they take the air out with a pump and it's being crushed. But it's being crushed by, by the atmospheric pressure, right? So the what matters is the differential, right? So it's a differential between inside and outside. 
So as long as inside our lungs, the inside is the same as the outside, so it's, it's in balance. I will talk about the lungs later, but as I've said, you, you have this um, medical situation where the differential is, uh, it's, it's not good, right? So you have more pressure outside the lungs on the wall that you have inside, and it's going to be collapsing. Okay, so that's the experiment that they did. You heat up water in a little bit of water in a can, so the air molecule, you know, they, they're gonna start to uh, move faster. And remember from chemistry, if you have, if you increase the temperature, you increase the pressure. So because this is a hot gas here, the pressure is gonna increase. I, I, you can, you can always. Um, run the simulation I, I showed you last time. As you increase the temperature, the, the, the pressure increases as well, right? So it's PV equals nRT. So it's an ideal gas. So the air molecule, you know, they, they're going to move faster, they jiggle faster, they collide faster. You have more collision on the wall, so the pressure increases inside. So in order to balance from for inside to outside, so you have the same pressure inside that you have the same pressure that you have outside. So some some molecules have to escape. So inside equals outside. But now you stop the molecule to escape, and you close your container, so the the molecule cannot escape. But now the molecules are going to move slower, right? So you decrease the pressure inside, so now you have low pressure inside, high pressure outside, so that's why it's going to be crushed, okay? It's not that obvious, intuitive, right? And remember, the pressure here is uh, inducing a force, and that force is always perpendicular to the surface area, okay? So the, the pressure is huge, right? 10 tons, it's about 10 tons per square meters, 10, 10 to the 5. 10,000 kilometers. Okay, so how can we measure the pressure? So the, the first one, the first barometer was um, built by Tor Torricelli. He was an Italian, and I think he did it with uh, water, but I will explain why water is not a good choice. But uh, now we use it uh, with mercury. Okay, so here how it works. You see, you take a tube here, and you put it upside down and in, inside a container of water. And, and, and actually, it's not water, it's mercury. So why does it have to be mercury? Because mercury has a very high density, so it's going to have a very high weight. Okay, so I will, I will, I'm going to show you the math. But anyway, as, as so here you have a vacuum. So here there is no pressure. Okay, so you take a test tube, for example, mercury here, and shoops, you flip it. So here there is no air, okay? So here there is no pressure, but there is pressure here. So here you have a differential between outside and then here inside. So the pressure from the atmosphere is going to push and it's going to lift the mercury. If it's one atmosphere, the mercury is going to be uh, lifted up to 760 millimeter. Okay, so that became a unit for pressure. So 760 millimeter of mercury, that will be the equivalent of one atmosphere. Okay, and that will be normal pressure. It's going to go here. If you're increasing the pressure, the liquid in the tube is going to increase. If you lower the the pressure, is going to decrease. Okay, so what's going on? Um, I'm going to do the math. You can try to do the math, so pause. You can pause the video and, and show that uh, where, where does 760 millimeter comes from. So first, uh, do remember that Pascal Pascal um, Principle, Pascal Principle says that the pressure is going to be transmitted, okay? And the pressure only depends on the where you are, below the surface here. 
So here, here, that pressure here, that you have here, it's going to be the same that you have here. So that, those pressure here, going to be the same. This is because of Pascal principle. You know, the, the pressure is transmitted through a fluid. Okay, but the pressure is the same below the surface of, of the fluid. Remember, we discussed that a lot. That's not that intuitive. But anyway, that pressure here will be the same than here. Okay, so what do we have here? We're going to have the force because of the pressure. So we're going to have a force here. We're going to have, a, I'm, I'm going to make just one. I'm going to make just one. Now I messed up. So here I have that force here. Okay, here. At that level here, because of that pressure there, which is one atmosphere. So let's say we have one atmosphere here. So the force, remember, is the pressure times the area. Okay? It's because the pressure is force per unit area. So the force that you're going to get here, pushing the liquid upward, it's going to be the atmospheric pressure because it's transmitted. So it's going to be 10 to the 5 times the area here. The area seems to be like a, a disc, but actually it, it doesn't really, really matter. So that will be your force up. At the same time, so here you have no pressure. Okay, The pressure here is zero because it's a, it's a vacuum. So if you take a, a test tube here, like not fully filled, put it this way. Up there, you're not going to have any pressure. And that here, that will be also the weight of your mercury column, right? And at equilibrium, remember physics one, the down force equals the up force. So F down, it's going to be the weight and the weight of mercury. And again, we suppose that it's one atmosphere. If the pressure increases, of course, it's going to go higher. But what's going on at one atmosphere? That's what we want to find out, OK? So um, what's, what's going to be the weight? It's going to be the mass of mercury times g, by definition, and uh, rho the density of mercury equals the mass divided by the volume. So that will be the volume here. Right? You have uh, some kind of cylinder. So the mass is the density times the volume. Okay. But the volume is the volume of a cylinder. So the mass of mercury equals rho of mercury. The volume is going to be the area times the height. Okay, so I'm going to call that theta h. Okay, so that's going to be the mass. So the, the mercury density times the area times delta h. So Newton's uh, second law, it's in equilibrium. There is no acceleration. It's not moving. So 10 to the 5 times the area equals the density of mercury times the area times delta h and that that goes away so what's the density of mercury so if you if you go back to a few slides up the density of mercury is 13 uh, 600 kilogram per meter cube and i forgot I forget a G here, I have a G. Okay, so that's the density of mercury. You see how, how big it is. So that's going to be 10 to the 5 equals 13,600 times delta H times 9.8. I'm going to say, um, yeah. So you want to solve for delta H. 
So it's going to be 10 to the 5, so it's 100,000. And then here you divide by 13,600 times 9.8. And the number you get is going to be 0 0.760 meters, which is 760 millimeters. Okay, so that's where that uh, comes from. So when you are taking your uh, blood pressure, it's, it's, it's using that unit here. That means that 760 millimeter of mercury is the same thing as one atmosphere. So if your blood pressure is 120 millimeter for the big number, you can, you can find you know, how much is it in atmosphere. So you will do uh, 120 divided by 760, okay? And you will gonna have the unit in atmosphere. And if you want to know um, in in international units, you just say you multiply by 10 to the five. So if you have 120 in blood pressure for the first number, you divide by 760. Okay, 760 millimeter of mercury is the same as 10 to the 5, so that's going to be uh, giving you the, 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 the other unit, okay? So that's the meaning of blood pressure. Okay, so then you can ask, um, can, can, I, can I do the same? And I, th I, think, I think originally it, it was... The, the first experiment with a w w um, barometer was done with water. Okay, so let's say uh, instead of mercury now, I take a very, very long straw, very long straw of water. Okay, what's going to happen? Of course, you, you take like an empty tube. Let's say you take an empty tube. And, and um, it has to be vacuum. So, okay, so now no, let's, let's just you take a long tube with water, flips, you flip it. So what's going to happen? The, the water here is going to rise and you, you don't want any... You, 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 here you want to make sure the pressure equals zero, okay? So the best way to do it, you take a tube, you flip it, a very long tube, here you have no pressure, and here, of course, you have the atmospheric pressure. So it's going to be the same thing, and water will have to rise until the weight of the water here will be matching the pressure. So you have the same pressure here that you have here, for the reason I've explained. So you have that force here, and you have the weight of the water. So the computation is going to be exactly the same, right? So you're going to have the force because of the pressure is going to be 10 to the 5 times the area. And on the other side, I'm going to have the weight, the weight of the water, right? The weight of the water is the density of the water times the volume. But the density of water is much less than the density of mercury. So it's going to be 1,000 times area times delta H, right? Because that's going to be the density of water. So now on the other side, I'm going to have a 1,000 times the volume A times delta H times G. Okay, I keep forgetting the G here. So it goes this way. Let's say G is 10 to make it easier. So it's going to be 10 to the fifth equals 1,000 times 10 times delta H. So this is... 10 to the 4, so delta H equals 10 meters. So if, if your tube, if the tube is less than 10 meter, and then you, you make the vacuum here, it, it, it will keep rising, it's going to fill everything, right? Because you don't have, the, the water wants to go to up to 10 meter. So you can make a straw. When, when we are making a straw, let's say, when you, you are making a straw, so you are drinking water, you make a vacuum here, so in, because you are, sucking, you are sucking the air from the straw, right? So this is your straw, so you are sucking the air from the straw. So because of the pressure here, 
the liquid is, is going to go into your mouth. So you can have a straw up to 10 meters, so 10 yards, okay? Up to 10 meters, you won't be able to suck it. And um, if, if you go to YouTube, and there is a very nice experiment by Walter Lewin. Uh, I don't know how you can find, like, atmospheric pressure straw. So he, he goes, he's in a classroom here. He, he has cranberry juice, too much sugar, by the way. And he's, um, so that will be on his desk in the classroom. And then the, the, he goes up to uh, use a ladder, ladder here to go up to 10 meters. 10 meters, he's here. And he made a very huge straw and he's able to suck the liquid up. Now, if he go above, he cannot suck the liquid, right? So you, you can go on YouTube, you can find the demonstration. It's a, it's a very cool demonstration. Okay, so here you have the math. And of course, why straw? That's a drawing by Paul Hewitt. I talked about him. It's the best way to understand the concept in physics. So here, um, if, if you suck, you are sucking the air in, so you are making a vacuum. So because there is a vacuum here, there is an imbalance between the pressure here and the pressure in your mouth. So the, 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 the atmospheric pressure is pushing the liquid up to your mouth. It's not that you are sucking the, the liquid, it's just the atmospheric pressure that is pushing up. Okay, so what we do usually, like when you take the pressure in your tire, you are computing what we call the gauge pressure. So that will be the difference of pressure between the atmosphere and the container. So if you have a container like a tire, and, and let's say um, the pressure is greater than outside, you see that the liquid here is going to be pushed up. And you can find that delta P here is rho GH. Okay? And this is called the uh, gauge pressure. Okay, we, we talked about that. So what matters is really the differential. So when you are taking pressure, you usually that things has to be at the level of your heart. So you are taking the pressure here. And that pressure here will be less than the pressure at your feet. Because you imagine that you are like a colon of blood. So here you have blood moving down to your feet. So at your feet, the pressure will be more than at your, uh, at your heart, at that level here. So because blood, blood is a fluid as well. And head will have less pressure than here. So that's why it's very easy to get uh, lightheaded, right? If, if you have a low pressure, low oxygen here. So that will be an ideal pressure. Although I was, uh, since you are in, if you are in uh, pre-health, it, it it used to be that when they were taking the, the the tension, when they were taking the blood pressure. They will never look at the first number. They will only look at the second number. And the threshold was 100. So if you want above 100, that was considered as hypertension, and they will give you medication. But now they keep changing the threshold, of course. So you know, then they can give you medication, uh, more medication. So now the threshold is 90. And now they even look at the first number. So they decided that 140 is the limit. Before the limit was higher, but now it's 140. Okay, so anyway, let's go back to physics. That means in uh, the pressure in millimeter of mercury, okay? So 760 is one, one atmospheric pressure. And then textbook. Okay, so here I should have... Um, Mention that website. It's a um, it's a free physics book, and here it's in interesting because they talk about the pressure in the human body. So, 
for example, okay, so that will be your um, systolic and, and uh, what is called diastolic. You, you also have, of course, the pressure in your eyes. That's very important. So the pressure on your eyes, you see it's positive. So it what um, inflate your eye. It's like kind of a balloon, right? But you, and you don't want too much pressure on your eye because in your eye, because that's called the glaucoma. Glaucoma is quite common and of course it can be very bad. Well, that will be the pressure in your eye and, and you measure the pressure, right? There is, they, they have a way to measure the pressure. I mean, they send like a puff of air on your eye. And lungs, of course, is a big deal. So it's it could be. So here you have two pressure on your lungs. You have the outside of the lung and you have the inside. And you see that the inside has to be higher pressure than the outside, because otherwise your lung collapses. Right. So if it's negative, it means it's a negative pressure. This just means lower pressure. So, but what matter is the differential? So the lungs is inside like an envelope, like it's attached to the thorax. So it has like a wall. That wall has to be at a lower pressure than the lungs itself, because otherwise the lung will collapse, right? And inside the lungs, of course, it's going to change if it's you are inhaling. So inhaling high pressure, exhaling low pressure. And you do that with the diaphragm here. Okay. So uh, the ear, of course, because you, you know the eardrum, when you go in an airplane, high up, the atmospheric pressure is low outside. And inside is high, so your ear will pop. And if you go underwater, it will be the opposite, right? You will have higher pressure outside, and it's going to push on your eardrum. So we are very it's, um, in, in balance, right? You, you want to make sure not to break that balance. Homeostasis, I, I forgot the name for that. So anyway, here is a is a problem. Okay, so let's say you have a uh, someone, and the height of that person is one point forty meters. So I guess it seems to me it's a child or someone pretty small. So at the heart here, yeah, the pressure is one twenty millimeter. Hg, and remember that 760. We said it's the same thing as one atmosphere, which is 10 to the 5 u newton per meter square. And the density of blood is 1060 kilogram per meter square. So it's, uh, of course, it's less than mercury. You don't want to have mercury in your blood, but but it's more than water, right? So the question is, what's going to be here, the pressure at your feet? And, and I did a mistake. That's why it, it's, not, it's not necessarily a child here. It's just that between your heart and your feet is 1.40 meters. So no, so it's an adult. Okay, Let's not take an account from your heart to your head. So between here and there, you have delta H. Okay, so you're going to have more pressure. So if I call the pressure P2 here and P1, you know, the, the blood here, you know, has some weight. So it's going to push down. And because of that weight, you're going to have a higher pressure at your feet. Um, that, that's why some people, when they take the airplane, they have those little stock here that they put here to, to compress and help the, the blood go back up right because it's hard to go against gravity that's why the heart is pumping you have to fight gravity you have to do work against gravity right if you have too much blood here it could be very bad for your heart so anyway 
the difference in pressure will be rho g delta h. It's like a, a gauge pressure. So that's going to be density of blood. That's going to be 9.8. And that's going to be the, the height. So the difference in pressure will be density of blood 1060 times 9.8 times 1.4 and you get something like 14 5 you have to do it okay you can pause the video of course newton per meter square and if i want to um, convert to millimeter because that's what they do here to say everything is in millimeter of mercury then you know that uh, 10, 10 to the fifth, it's one atmosphere, it's 760. So what do you get for 14,543? Put a question mark. So you always do that like this. So the difference in pressure is going to be you cross, multiply, divide, right? So it's, or you can say 14,543. How much do you have in it of 10 to the five? And then you multiply by 1060. So delta P equals 100.5 millimeter of mercury. So the excess pressure, so P2 at your feet will be 120 plus 110.5. So if can do the experiment i should do that i never do that like if you if you take that device to measure the pressure <laughs> see if it's consistent you should have more pressure here than you have here isn't that cool especially because those devices are very cheap on uh, you can buy them okay so that was for the answer and then for the i so you have the eye, it's inflated. Of course it's inflated, it's, I don't know how, how to make an eye. That's an eye, so that's my eye. And, and you have pressure inside your eye, it's about two to 24 millimeter of mercury if it's normal. And I told you that if, if you go higher than that, then that's gonna be bad, okay? And of course, because there is a pressure, there is a force. So let's say this is the back of your eye, and they're asking you what's going to be the force if the pressure inside your eye is 85 millimeter. Okay, and, the, and they give you that the area on the back of the back of the eye is 6 centimeters square. So here you have to be very careful that you remember that, remember that one meter is a hundred centimeter. So one centimeter is 0 0.01 meters. So one centimeter square, it's going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 meter square. Okay, so one square centimeter is, this is 10 to the negative two. This is 10 to the negative 2. So that's going to be 10 to the negative 4 meters square. So uh, in uh, international unit, the area will be 6 times 10 to the negative 4 meters square. So a pressure, a pressure of 85 millimeter of Hg you want to convert that in the other unit. So you go how much of the 760 goes into that and you multiply by 10 to the 5 Newton per meter square. Okay, so remember you, you all you have to do is a proportion. 760 is 10 to the 5 Newton per meter square. So 85, you cross multiply, divide. So that will be the, the uh, computation. So the pressure inside your eye will be, okay? 
So what does it mean? It means a force of that much Newton per square meters. So if you have that much square meters, you multiply, right? So the force equals area times the pressure. So that's going to be 11 124 times 6 times 10 to the negative 4. So the, the force on your eye will be 6.7 Newton. Okay, so 1 kilogram on Earth is 10 Newton. So if you have 6.7, that's going to be about 6, 7 um, 670 grams, right? Which is about 1.5 pound. So 1.5 pound, it's not that good inside your your eye. So um, we, we can talk about the eardrum. Now the eardrum is somewhere here. Of course, you have a force here. If, if uh, bec because you have pressure from the atmospheric pressure and everything goes well, you have the same pressure inside here. Now, as I told you, if you go in an airplane, you're going to have more pressure here that you have there. So it's going to pop. Okay, so it's, it will balance again. If you go inside the ocean, you're going to have a lot of pressure there. That's why your ear hurts. You, you can break your eardrum. Let's say you have an explosion. If you have a, an explosion, a big boom, you're going to have a shock wave. That shock wave is going to exert a force on your eardrum. And, and you're going to break you're going to break the eardrum. And that hurts like hell, right? If you have a shock wave here. Yeah. Any explosion will do it. Eardrum will be broken. So the force that will break your eardrum is uh, 3 Newton. And the question is, what's the gauge pressure? So it, it means how much more pressure than the atmospheric pressure uh, do, do I need to apply? Uh, so the force and, and the eardrum have an area of 1 square square centimeter. I have to Google it, okay, to know if it's uh, if it's true. So the area is 0 0.01 times 0 0.01 meter square, so 10 to the negative 4 meter square. So the pressure in excess will be the force times the area. So that's going to be 3 times 10 um, no, the pressure is the force divided by the area. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to the negative 4. So that's going to be 30,000 Newton per meter square. And then you can convert that. So 30,000 divided by uh, 100,000 times 760, like I did before, and you get 2 to 8 milliliter Hg. Okay, so anyway, you, you can do all those computations. That will be 10 to the 5. So that will be for your air drum. So you, you have, uh, I highly recommend that website because it, they tell you how, how the heart and the lungs work. There is a all discussion about that. There is a discussion about the eye. And here they show you when you inhale, that means the pressure, inhale, the pressure is higher outside than inside your lungs. So you are sucking water in. You do that because you move your diaphragm. So you increase the volume here. So the pressure goes down. And then here you do the opposite, you decrease the size of your lung, so the pressure here is higher than outside. But you see the wall, you see you have wall here, that number here has to be always smaller than this one, so your, uh, your, your lungs does not collapse. 
and then if you uh, so here there is a lot of problems that I guess if you are in pre-health you should uh, study okay I'm not going to do it you can do it on your own because you have the solution here and you can google so that will be very interesting oh that hurts but um, looks interesting too and I'm not sure or oh, oh, they are measuring the pressure in the spinal fluid oh that seems to hurt so the pressure here you see is transmitted throughout throughout the, the fluid uh, so you you should do that okay then it says textbook 13.6 okay let's see if i have it's your textbook which is a very nice textbook And I think the same kind of problem here on your blood pressure. Suppose you have a healthy systolic of 1.3 times 10 to the 4 level of your heart. So here the heart is here. They are measuring that pressure. You have the density. Find the blood pressure at a point in your head. So on, on your head here, of course, the pressure will be smaller. And the feet here, of course, the pressure here will be higher. Okay, but we we already did that. We, we did things like that. So so the density. So quickly, okay, just but you can. I'm going to give you the results so you know. But it's in your book. So the density of the blood again and the pressure at your heart is 10 to the fourth kilogram per meter square and it's about 100 millimeter Ag so it's a, it's a, it's a low pressure. Okay so now between your head between your head and your heart you have a height of you have a height of 35 centimeter right so it's going to be 0 0.35 meters so here the pressure compared to your head the pressure is higher compared to your head okay because it goes with the fluid height so here you have more weight so it's like measuring the gouge pressure so delta p equals rho g delta h so the difference in pressure equals 1060 times 9.8 times 0 0.35 and if you do that you're gonna get a difference of but you know that the pressure will be less right be less so p on the head it's gonna be whatever you have at the heart so it's going to be 1.3 times 10 to the 4 minus that because the, the pressure has to be less okay so that's going to be 9.4 times 10 to the 3 newton per meter square okay you, you can check the computation but it has to be less okay higher you are that's why it told people can get late high that is yes because the pressure can be even lower and you can compute that in a millimeter you can you can do 9.4 times 10 to the third how much 10 to the 5 and much by by 1060 you will get the answer in a millimeter now they, they do it for the the feet so now the person is uh, 
sitting here so that's your heart and that's your feet so heart will be at a higher higher pressure than your feet right so now you will add so that means if you have pressure here and the pressure one here so the pressure two will be higher than pressure one okay so delta p again is going to be rho g delta h that's going to be 1.10 meters but the pressure at your feet is whatever you have at your heart so 1.3 times 10 to the 4 plus before i did a minus but now it's a plus okay So very cool um, website and I, I thought I, I put here a link to a video but I, I guess I forgot. I recommend that you google um, um, there, there is a video about okay you, you can find that video here. Hey, so, so pneumothorax can cause a lot of pain, a lot of anxiety for our patients. Okay, you can Google that uh, on, on YouTube. Okay, so next we're going to talk about the... Uh, Archimede buoyancy. So buoyancy is not that... Um, I'm just going to introduce now and and then i will develop next time so each time you have something that is emerged so let's say it doesn't matter if it's floating or emerged but let's say it's totally emerged right um maybe, maybe it's a rock inside the water maybe maybe you are holding that rock here so what are the force acting on it so you see that the pressure here will be higher than the pressure there, right? Because we know delta P equals rho G delta H. That's what we have learned. So the pressure here, so you have force, of course it depends on the surface area. That force here, those force here perpendicular, and you also have pressure here. But this one is killed by that one. But we only consider the bottom and the top, right? That's going to be delta H. Because here, you're going to have less pressure. And remember, pressure will induce, will induce a force. So you're going to have more up force than you have down force. You also have pressure on, on this side here, but they are cancelled. They cancel each other, so the side doesn't matter. It's really the top and the bottom, you see, uh, right is cancelled by left. So what's going to hap happen when you're going to find the net force, when you're going to find the net force, you do this minus that, and this minus that, and this minus that. What do you get? You can, you can try to answer. I'm sure you can find the solution. So now if I just do the net force, so those, this one is cancelled by that one, that one is cancelled by that one, that one is going to cancel by that one, but here, I have a net force, right? Because the up force from from the pressure from the water, it's going to be due to that delta H, right? So you have a delta P equals rho G delta H. So then you're going to force times the area. So you have a net force. That net force here is called the BNC, BNC force, right? And then you also have the weight. So you have the weight of the object here. And, and here, in that case, you are holding, so of course you have a tension here. From, from the string. And if it's in equilibrium, that means the tension here 
will be equals to the tension plus the beyond force will be equals to the weight. Okay. Now, if I'm holding the same rock outside, what do we have? We're going to have now the net force, you have the weight, so you still have, I made a little weight here, so I'm going to make a little weight. I should make a big weight, right? No, I should make it in a different color, the weight. What? I'm going to have a big, a big weight. So you have the big weight pulling down, the B and C pushing up, and you have the tension. Now, if I, if I take the same rock, you still have the weight and the tension. Now, if I attached here to a bathroom scale, so I have a bathroom scale like you did in the you did in physics one. What's gonna happen? What do you think you're gonna read here? What you are reading here is the tension. Okay. So the tension in that case here, for example, the tension is gonna be equals to your weight. That's that will be what what you're gonna read with the scale. So the tension here is also pulling, you remember tension, so it's going to have the same tension here pulling on the scale, but is it reading the same? Because, because now you have up, so up is tension, plus the buoyancy force equals to the weight that you are reading. Okay, I'm going to call that the apparent weight. Uh, the weight, no, sorry, sorry, that's not the apparent weight, sorry. So it equals the weight. So that's that's Newton. Second law, it's in equilibrium. B and C force is pushing up. The, the real weight is pushing down and the tension. The tension, that's your apparent weight, right? Because you are pulling on the scale. You see? The scale is pulling on the rock. So the rock is pulling on the scale and you are ne ne this is negligible. The mass of the rock is negligible. So by, by, by watch... The force here will be equal to whatever you read here. So now this tension, this tension is going to be the real weight minus the BNC force. Okay, so that's called the apparent weight. You remember we talked about the apparent weight a lot in physics one. If you are in a elevator and the elevator is accelerating up and you are standing on the scale your apparent weight is going to be more because that will be your normal force here and, and you have your weight and and there is a so that if you are accelerating up that normal force will be greater than that weight the normal force is the force from the scale but you push back on the scale with the same force right so that will be your apparent weight so that's why if uh, something is in the water, totally submerged, the apparent weight, the weight will be less than the real weight. That's why it's easier to lift someone. When, when, uh, when, that's why we, we do so much therapy in the water, right? So the apparent weight will be less. And that's because of the BMC force. You, you don't know, you don't need to take physics if you are holding someone in your arm in the water you know the the it will be easier to lift that's why it's like an anti-gravity right you are losing weight because of that buoyant force so and that buoyant force and we'll discuss more next time but that buoyant force comes from here that's Again, that's from Paul Hewitt. It comes from the difference between the pressure here and the new pressure there. Do you see, if you are at that level, let's say you have twice the pressure, uh, more pressure here than you have here, 
So you go down, you have even more pressure here, but you also have more pressure there. You go even deeper, you have even more pressure here than you have there, right? The pressure translates as forces, but the differential here, differential is the same whether it's here or it's there. So the buoyancy force here is, is the same, whether you're going to be here, whether you're going to be here, and whether you're going to be here. Okay, so we'll talk about that.